In my introductory video on time series regression, I talked about dummy variables. And I think it was, well, not the best point in time to introduce dummy variables because the concept is much easier to understand in the cross-sectional environment. So I want to make up for that. So let's imagine a simple example. Say you want to know what determines the volume of trade in a sample of big European cities in 1800. So you construct a model and your dependent variable is the volume of trade, okay, so measured on some arbitrary value. So trade of city i, okay, so let's include that. So we obviously need a constant, so we include alpha 1, so we know that. Well, what determines um, the volume of trade? Well, I would say population, urbanity, and some sort of GDP measure are very good ex uh, explanatory variables. So our model is will be extended to plus beta 1 times the population of city i plus beta 2 times some, well, measure of urbanity of city i plus beta 3 times the GDP in this city, okay? So this is already a pretty good model, but I know of another very good explanatory variable. Well, having a seaport, but how do you measure that? I mean, you can't just measure having a seaport, right? And this is where the dummy variable comes into play. What you do is you create a new variable. Let's, let's call that variable port, okay? So when you create a new variable, and then you take a look at your observations. And if a city is in possession of a seaport, so if there is a seaport, then the value for that variable port will be equal to one. However, if the city does not possess of a seaport, so if there's no seaport, then that variable will be equal to zero. So the value is either equal to one if there is a C port or equal to zero if there's not a C port, okay? So our model, so, so let's include that into our model so that our model becomes plus alpha two times whether or not a city has a C port and some error term, okay? So we include some error term. Okay, now notice, and let me get another color to show that to you. So notice how um, the coefficient is equal to alpha two, and it's not equal to beta four, for example. Well, remember how we would interpret, let's say, beta two. So then you will see the difference. So how would we interpret beta two, if you would est get estimates for that? Well. We would say if you increase um, urbanity by one, then the volume of trade would increase by beta two. Now, could the same be said about having a seaport? Well, no, um, you either have a seaport or you don't. Okay, so there are just two possible values. Um, so the effect is a constant one. Now you can't just increase that variable by let's say 100. It's either one or zero. Okay, so this is why, and this is a very important part, the effect is a constant one. So having a port increases the volume of trade by alpha two on average and holding all other effects constant. And this is the important part. Having a C port increases on average the volume of trade in a city by alpha two, all else constant. Ceteris paribus. Now imagine we would only have a um, ex an example with two continuous or with only one continuous explanatory variable. Well, let's say population. Now how would how could we graph that relationship? Now the relationship would look like this. So this is population. And this is trait. Okay. So this is uh, let's let me put that somewhere else. So this is trait, okay? Now, the, the, the effect would obviously be positive. So let's say the effect looks like this, okay? So this is 200 and well, what do we see? Well, if we increase 
the population, we also increase the volume of trade. And that makes sense, right? The more people are in a given city, the higher will be the volume of trade. This is, this is obvious, obvious. So um, let's add the dummy variable into our model. Let's say alpha two is equal to, well, let's say 50, okay? Now, how would that relationship look like? Well, it would look like this. Let's have a look. 250. So the slope of our uh, of our curves is the same. So in either way, it's the, the slope for the population. Uh, it's the coefficient for population. So the slope stays the same. Okay. However, the effect is a constant one because this right here, this is alpha one. Or another way to think about it is this. And let, let me change the color. Another way to think about is this. So this curve right here is essentially trade equal to alpha one plus beta one times population plus and remember alpha two is equal to 50. So plus 50 times now what's times what? Well, times zero because the city does not have a seaport. Okay. And let's say these are our estimates. Okay. And how does that uh, same equation look for this curve over here? Well, let's have a look. So that would be the following regression equation. So trade is equal to alpha one plus beta one times population plus 50 times, and this is the difference one, because this city right here does have a seaport. So the variable for port is equal to one right here. And since the city down here does not have a seaport, it's zero down here. What is 50 times zero? Well, it's zero. So the only constant effect we have, well, is the constant alpha one. However, 50 times one is 50. And if we add this together, what do we get? Well, we get 250 because this right here is equal to alpha one plus alpha two. Okay. This is the relationship um, between the variables. So you can see that the dummy variable has an effect on the constant. The slope of our regression, however, stays the same. Okay, so I hope this into or this has helped you to understand the intuition behind a dummy variable. It's actually quite simple and, and a very useful tool, I have to say, because you know there are many, many explanatory variables. Well, that are not continuous. However, they can be incorporated into our model by simply coding them as a dummy variable. Well, so there are literally millions of uh, possibilities how you could use a dummy variable. Okay, now how would that look like in the time series regression context? Well, I, th I think seasonality is the best example for that. So let's say we model the volume of foreign trade of the United States over time. Okay, so we model, oh no, let's, let's rephrase that since it's time series, let's use the change or the, the, the first difference of the volume of foreign trade at time t and that is equal to well let's let's do some let's use a more sophisticated model so let's say it's alpha one plus beta one times the population plus beta two times urbanity plus beta three times gdp and let's include a lot of seasonal variables. Okay, so, so this right here is equal to 11 dummy variables. Okay, because I don't want to write down 11 dummy variables. That would take forever. Okay, so what you have would be like alpha two times whether or not it's February, alpha three, whether or not it's March all the way down to alpha 12, whether or not it's December. Okay, and some 
error term, of course. Now, I don't want to write that down, That's so I just write down season, okay? Okay, um, now let's say we estimate the parameters, and let's say we have significant dummy variables for our uh, seasonal effects. Okay, so we have 11 dummy variables from indicating whether it's February all the way down indicating whether it's December. Okay, so 11 dummy variables. So let's have a look at the coefficient of our December dummy variable. So this coefficient right here. So let's say alpha 12 is equal to, let's say 2.5. Okay, it's 2.5. Now, what does that coefficient say? Well, it says that on average, the change in the volume of foreign trade is 2.5, let's say, um, yeah, 2.5 billion dollars higher um, in December than it is in January. Okay, so so let me re let me say that again. So if alpha 12 is equal to 2.5, let's say we measure it in billion dollars, then it, what it says is that in December, on average, the change in the volume of foreign trade is on average $2.5 billion higher than in January. Okay, so we have some significant seasonal effect. So why January? Why do we compare it to January? You see that there is no, there is no dummy variable for January. We start our dummy variables starting in, or they're starting in February, okay? So why, why is there no variable for January? Well, we need a baseline category co to compare the effect to. So that, that's why we, why we include February till December. You could also include, uh, uh, include January, March until December and leave out February, but you need to have one baseline category where you compare the estimates to. Okay, so this, this is why we, I've interpreted the alpha 12 coefficient like, well, on average, the change in the volume of foreign trade is $2.5 billion higher in December than it is in January. It's just because I need a baseline category to compare to, okay? Now, I, I know it's a bit complicated, but I think the, the intuition behind it is, well, really simple. And again, you see why we need to have constant seasonal fluctuations. Okay, so I said that in the video, our, our seasonal fluctuations need to be constant because again, what I say is, well, if alpha 12 is equal to 2.5 well, billion dollars, then what it says is, on average, the change in foreign, in the volume of foreign trade is 2.5 billion dollars higher than in January. Now, if we don't have constant variance in our seasonal fluctuations, well, that that really doesn't say a lot, right? If if um, the change in, uh, or if the, the seasonal fluctuation increases over time. So this is why you need to make sure that your seasonal fluctuations are actually constant over time. Okay, so I hope this video has helped you to understand dummy variables.